So this is a follow-up to the What is Big Data lectures in where we're going to look at complexity in more detail, especially in the sense that it implies structure. Now we've already seen that complex tends to mean unpredictable, but it doesn't necessarily mean random. Instead, it usually means a very complicated structure. So we're going to begin by elaborating on the importance of scale. We've already looked at this briefly, but let's look at it a little more in depth. In particular, we're going to talk about modeling with algorithms. We've already seen proteomics, for instance, that considers both the human and protein scales simultaneously, and that requires models that span multiple scales. And equations are just not good at multiple scale modeling. So therefore, we're going to do predictive modeling with algorithms, in particular algorithms which work well with multi-scale big data. For instance, let's start out by defining a function using an algorithm, and it's going to be a multi-scale function. Now, Typically, we define functions with equations, like y equals x squared, or uh, f of x equals uh, x log x. But we can also define functions with algorithms. And the algorithm we're going to use here in each iteration, each linear segment is going to be connected, or each linear segment with two connected segments in each iteration we're going to replace each linear segment with two connected segments via a template parallelogram particular we're going to keep the vertical sides vertical so it's a parallelogram with vertical sides and we're going to take the lower edge and we're going to replace it by an interior uh, uh, cusp so if we have a straight edge we use the template and replace that straight edge by this cusp that's defined by this parallelogram where we always keep the sides vertical. We're also going to maintain symmetry about x equals one half primarily because we're mathematicians we do stuff like that. Now let's start with an absolute value looking function uh, a tent and let's take each of the two linear segments and use the template and replace the segments by the cusp uh, that's inside of the parallelogram and so therefore now we have four linear segments let's do the same thing with each one of them using the parallelogram template keeping the sides uh, vertical replacing the lower edge by the interior cusp and we do this keeping these vertical segments vertical. That's what guarantees it's a function, vertical line test. And now we have eight pieces. And we're just going to continue doing this. And what we see emerging is a fractal interpolation function. So we do this and we think of this process as going on indefinitely and it converges to a function whose graph is self-similar. Now self-similar means if you zoom in at any point or any region you'll see the parallelogram template repeated again at that level. So that means that there's infinite detail at all scales. Every time you reduce to a smaller scale there's the tent, uh, the parallelogram template again. Now <coughs> The result is therefore continuous everywhere and differentiable nowhere. The proof of continuity uh, is actually pretty straightforward. It's because all those uh, line segments were connected. The proof of uh, differentiability nowhere is because as you zoom in, you keep seeing the use of uh, linear segments being replaced by cusps, which are not differentiable. So data can be very large because we need features at all scales and that's usually the reason we need massive amounts of data at the smallest scale. Now what we're looking at in the fractal interpolation function is a fractal. 
So a fractal it has a, a non-integer dimension. So I'm just going to go through this real quickly. Length is a one-dimensional measure, area is a two-dimensional, and volume is a three-dimensional. So if we started with a straight line segment, and we used a rule, an algorithm, where each line segment is replaced by this eight section uh, over, up, over, down, down, over, up, over, then that means each one of these is a fourth as long as the original and there are eight of them. So if we keep applying this rule to every straight segment then we in the limit will converge to what's known as the coach curve. The coach curve is a fractal. Uh, if you zoom in on a section of it, it looks like the overall because we keep seeing this iterative rule over and over and over. Notice that each iteration doubles the length of the previous because there are eight parts and each part's a fourth as long as the original. So the area is zero in every iteration, but in the limit, the length goes to infinity. So it has infinite length and zero area. Infinite length means it's more than one dimensional. Finite or zero area means it's less than two dimensional and therefore the coach curve has a dimension between 1 and 2. In fact it has a dimension of 1.5. That's why I, I like to use it. So it shows you what's halfway in between uh, 1 and 2. Now a fractal is, what's, uh, is a structure that has a non-integer house door for information dimension. And we can create fractals in different ways. So we can remove rather than replace and usually that's how we get what are called canter sets. So our rule in this case is from each segment let's remove the middle fifth. So we just take the the fifth, so divide into five parts, take the middle fifth and throw it out. So if we iterate, the first iteration is a segment, the second iteration uh, has the fifth removed, then the fifth is removed uh, from each one of the two segments. Now we have four segments. Then remove the fifths from those four segments. Now we have eight. And we continue indefinitely. And in the limit, we actually get a set. Uh, we can actually say what set we get. Suppose that we started with the unit interval 0, 1. Then from each segment, we remove the middle fifth and that means everything between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 in the first iteration and then from those two pieces everything between 0 0.04 and 0 0.06 and everything between 0 0.64 and 0 0.66 is removed so essentially we can't have a 4 or a 5 in the first digit. Now we can't have a 4 or a 5 in the second digit. And if we keep going with that, then in the limit, we get decimals in the Cantor set that are of the form 0 0.D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, where DJ is a digit uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, except the D1 can't be a 4 or 5, the D2 can't be a 4 or a 5, the D3 can't be a 4 or a 5. So this Cantor set is all the decimals in which there are no 4s or 5s. The digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 6, 7, 8, 9. Now that means that we have this infinite set, this infinite collection of points that are in the Cantor set but none of the points in the counter set have a 4 or 5 in their uh, decimal expansions. And we can do the same thing. We can remove second fifths, we can remove second third fourth fifths, we can remove middle thirds, we can remove the last tenths, so on and so forth. All these will have a well-defined numerical structure. And in general, a counter set is what we call what remains after an infinite sequence of iterations of subinterval removals is applied to a closed interval. We can also get fractals using branching structures. And notice that once again we're getting scale. Uh, by the way, the scale with here, the canter set here is that we have no fours and fives 
for every decimal place. That means that every level at every scale at the one tenth, the one hundredth, the one thousandth, the one millionth, the one billionth, the one trillionth, whatever. We have a repetition of a pattern at every single scale. Branching structures, we could have a uh, trunk that branches to a daughter, and the daughter segments can't be as large as the trunk, but maybe they're 75% as large as the trunks we have here. And there's two of them. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the diameters uh, are going to... Uh, zero, but if you take the total diameters, they're becoming infinite because 0 0.75, 0 0.75, but 2 times 0 0.75 is 1.5. So you have this uh, increase. So what happens to the surface area and the volume of this branching structure if each branch is only 0 0.75 times the diameter of its parent? Well, you start out with a surface area A0. The surface area the second, each one of the branches is a smaller surface area, but there are two of them, and twice that gives you more surface area than the original. And then the next branching you have four, and the total surface area of all four collectively is more than the previous two. So what happens? The area goes to infinity, as in gets larger and larger. But I can take this entire branching structure and put it into a suitcase. So therefore the volume is finite, but the surface area is becoming infinite. This is what's known as the fractal advantage. And you can see the lungs of a human uh, are fractals. They branch more than 20 times. Why? Because infinite surface area is a great advantage. Now the lungs don't have infinite surface area, but in the limit, mathematically, that's what they're approaching. And that surface area determines how much oxygen and they can bring in, how much carbon dioxide can go out. And so humans are, in some mathematical sense, bringing stuff in through an infinite surface area, even though it only has a finite volume. By the way, the dimension of the lung surface is 2.97. So the surface of our lungs is approaching three-dimensional. It's pretty amazing. And there's fractals everywhere. So cancer cells have fractal structures. Wavelets tend to be uh, fractals. Uh, landscapes are fractals. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has a fractal appearance. So all these are fractals in the sense that there are details at every scale. In fact, this is image that you saw in the middle, which I've now blown up, is not a, an image of anything in reality. This is a computer-generated fractal. This entire landscape, which looks an awful lot like what you'd see if you drove up in the mountains close to Johnson City here, uh, but it's a fractal. So, big data is large and complex because these, this multi-scale phenomena, such as fractals, tends to be a rule rather than an exception. It tends to be a feature of our existence, not an interesting side note. So, the y equals x squared is the interesting tidbit side note. The fractal, uh, algorithmically generated mathematical structure, that's what tends to dominate our world.